All right, y'all. So today we're gonna we're gonna address the problem here with my one-ton dump truck bed. So the floor is obviously rusting through, and it's funny because it's happening the worst where it's been patched before. See, now here it's not been patched before, but it is starting to develop holes and then the sides are rotten out as well. Yeah, this whole bed really needs rebuilt, but I mean, I don't, I don't use it enough to really justify putting all that money into, you know, with the material. So just for now, I'm going to, I'm just going to patch these again. Um, you know, I'm assuming that the reason that these patches rusted through is because there was just a small hole here before and they just welded a plate on top of that so then the water got up through and in between the floor and the patch and just rotted it out even quicker so you know i'm just gonna cut these out put put some new patches in there for now and then uh, maybe this winter we'll address putting a whole new floor in it um, the material for the floor and the sides probably only a couple hundred dollars but the time it's going to take is the problem because this is stitch welded across each cross beam underneath the bed so going through and cutting all these welds out is going to be going to be a nightmare and I don't really want to deal with that so um, let's just get this patched up so so we're not losing material so this is the first time I'm using this new tool um, this is the Dewalt 20 volt brushless four and a half inch angle grinder um, there's a part number so I've been wanting to get one of these for a while um, but it's a little pricey for what it is so last year I told myself that if I found at least five situations throughout the year where this would have saved me time having the cordless four and a half inch angle grinder that I'd go ahead and buy it um, and this is this is probably about the fifth time that I knew it would have been useful to have because I didn't want to work in the garage it would have been pretty hot so I wanted to park out here underneath the shade tree and didn't want to have to run extension cords and deal with all that mess. So I went ahead and got it. Yeah, maybe I didn't necessarily need it, but I went ahead and got it. So um, I did just figure something out with it though that I'm not used to because on my old Craftsman corded angle grinder, I mean, I can hog away all day with that thing and it doesn't stop. This one here, it shut off a few times on me here. Now granted, I had a dead battery on it and I didn't realize, so it didn't get very much out of that. Put a new battery on it, cut the rest of that out, no problem. Started on the first cut here and 
it shut off on me wouldn't start back up battery's got plenty of charge so it, it got real hot right here on the head so I figured well maybe I exceeded the duty cycle on it so I got the manual out I couldn't find the duty cycle but I did find that it has you know a overheat protection on it you know keep the motor from burning up so it looks like I don't have I, I just need to not hog on it so much just let it work itself instead of pressing so hard so we'll try that and see if it lasts or not but I mean small price to pay I guess for the convenience to be able to take this anywhere you know I can take this out on jobs with me and cut rebar or whatever you know real easy so that combined with this Lennox um, Metal Max blade uh, these blades are, are awesome so I've been using these for two years three years now something like that I don't remember but this is only the second one I've ever bought um, and the first one I had to replace it just because I dropped the grinder and it bent one of the fins on the blade so never did get it to cut right again after that so We'll see how this one long the we'll see how long this one lasts. About a hundred thousandths. I imagine it's probably somewhere around 330 seconds, 90, 96 thousandths or so. And uh, I have this here, the head laying around. It's it's a it's a little thinner. 70 thou, but you know it's it's between. It's between this and I think I have some like quarter inch stuff. And I don't really want to use the quarter inch stuff for this because I don't have a whole lot of it left. And a quarter inch stuff makes for real good bracing and gussets and stuff when you're building things. So I'm gonna, I'd rather use this up. So I don't think it'll be a big deal. We'll, we'll patch this in and see how it works out. So, um, I don't know if you guys really know a whole lot about measuring tools, but this is called a digital caliper. So the way it works is, you know, you turn it on and then, you know, make sure you zero it out. So you got to zero it out and then you got a little thumb roller here. You can roll it out and it you know, tells you down to the tenths of thousandths on, you know, that's, that's four decimal places. Well, I guess half a thousandths. Um, so it gives you three decimal places plus the half. So, you know, to do that, you just put it on there, roll it down till it's tight. And, you know, it gives you your reading and then you can lock it here once you get it in your spot you can lock it down so if you want to carry that over to compare it to something else or anything like that or so you don't move it whenever you take it off um, so that's the that's the OD measuring so it also has these top fins or these top uh, prongs up here you can measure the inner diameter of something so you just put it in there and roll it out and you know it gives you gives you that reading so it's not quite as precise as like a micrometer but you know for for non-precision work this these here are really handy to have I bought these initially for for my ammunition reloading 
um, you know, measure case lengths and stuff like that. So it's a very, very handy tool. And it, I, I think this is only, I don't know, 20 bucks or something like that at Harbor Freight. And I've had this thing for like 10 years. I, I might even have had this longer than that. I can't remember for sure. I, I, I was a machinist for a little while and, um, you know, I found it to be useful for that. And, and this is where it's mostly useful for is just measuring, you know, rough dimensions of, uh, of materials. So there's your little machinist lesson for the day. Let's go ahead and uh, measure up our holes, get it laid out, get our pieces cut out, and we'll, uh, we'll weld them. Alright, so I wasn't perfectly square on everything, cutting it out, but um, I need to start at 4 inches here. So I'm going to make my mark at 4 inches. four and an eighth out here and three and five eighths this way so let's do three and five eighths this way first and then four and an eighth out here first line and I'm using soapstone you can pick these up at Harbor Freight too. They're pretty cheap and they're really useful to use when you're doing metal working, laying stuff out. And I like to grind a little bit of a tip to it so you can get a little more precise marks. So I got my three and five eighths down here. Get my three and five eighths up here. And then mark this one out. One piece. Get these cut out and you know we'll probably have to do a little bit of touch up grinding to fit good. I want them to fit down in so my welds and aren't sticking up you know way high. So they're gonna fit pretty much flush down in there. that it was too tight it was just it's a, it's a little warm so um, you know, this quick quick connector um, pretty handy and uh, just in case it is too tight they give you this allen wrench that fits in there you can shimmy it a little bit deburr everything. Tell you what, this eats through the batteries. 
you have any kind of decent sized project you're planning on using this thing for, make sure you have about five of these five amp hour batteries on hand. minutes to deburr this. Now when I put it away I don't have to worry about cutting my finger off the next time I go to grab this out. So I started to get a little frustrated here because trying to fill these gaps and it's just burning through. And I was getting hot, the sun was shining right on where I'm working. So it was time to take a break, go eat dinner and regroup. And now it's nice and shady where I'm working and um, everything's cooled off. So let's, uh, let's get back at it here, see if we can't get this fixed up. patched in it's uh definitely not pretty but at least i won't have you know big chunks of rock falling out of the bed whenever i'm hauling so um definitely needs the floor replaced it kept burning through it's so thin um so if i'm gonna if i'm gonna keep this a dump truck for next next year then over the winter i'll probably replace the whole floor and the sides of the of the bed here but for now this will uh this will get me by i tried patching up some of the small holes that were laying around here and i just made things worse so the rest of these little pin holes i'm just gonna leave go for now if they get any bigger i'll put another patch on so that'll uh that'll do for now on to the next project. <laughs> 